You know, in the early 1980s in hockey, everybody was talking with the Edmonton Oilers, talking with the Calgary Flames, the Winnipeg Jets, the Vancouver Canucks, as just being opponents in Gretzky's annual drive towards the Stanley Cup Finals. But by the mid-1980s, things started to change. And a certain player arrived in Calgary, uh, brought big shoulders, big style of play, and changed the way that the teams in the league look at Calgary. He went from a number two to a definite number one, made two Stanley Cup Finals with him, won uh, the, the second matchup against Montreal, and eventually become the only player in NHL history uh, of the modern era uh, of his quality to win Stanley Cups with three different teams. Now again, he's only one of 11 players, but the most prominent of the modern era. So today we're going to be talking about, again, the big man from Oshawa, Joe Newendike. Now, he played the NHL uh, for two decades, was a second round selection of the Flames 27 overall in the 85 NHL entry draft, and again, played 20 campaigns for first the Flames in the Dallas Stars, where he won a cup, New Jersey, where he won a cup, then Toronto, and then the Florida Panthers. Again, uh, the cup winners uh, with Calgary in 89 versus Montreal, Dallas in 1999 against Buffalo, and New Jersey in 2003. Now, a two-time Olympian, he eventually won a gold medal with Team Canada in the 2002 Winter Games and, and was inducted in the Hockey Hall of Fame in 2011, with his uniform number being honored by the Flames. In 2014, his famous number 25, now uh, cap, captain as well. Uh, Newendike's efforts allowed him to be inducted in the Ontario Sports Hall of Fame in 2014 as well. In 2017, Newendike was named one of the 100 greatest NHL players in history. Now, he started off as a clean box lacrosse player and eventually led the Whitby Warriors to the 84 Bento Cup National Junior title before focusing exclusively on hockey. He played NCAA hockey with the Cornell Big Red, where he was a two-time All-American. He won the Collier Memorial Trophy as NHL Rookie of the Year in 88, after becoming only the second first-year player to score 50 goals. He was a four-time All-Star, won the King Clancy Memorial Trophy in 95 for leadership and humanitarian work, and was named the Connie Smythe Trophy winner as the MVP of the 99 playoffs. Now, Dune Dyke played 1,257 games in his career with 564 goals and 1,126 points. Now, New Dyke was hobbled by back pain most of his career and eventually forced him into retirement as a player in 2006. He then began a new career in management, acting first as a consultant to the GM with the Panthers before moving on to the Maple Leafs where he was an assistant to the GM. Newendike was also the GM of the Dallas Stars for four years up until 2013. And he also has worked for the, the Pro Scout and Advisor for the Hurricanes for a number of seasons. Now, Newendike, again, born in Oshawa, September 10, 66, but again, grew up in Whitby. He's the youngest of four children to Gordon and Joanne Newendike, who immigrated to Canada from the Netherlands in 1958. Now, Gordon owned a car repair shop in Whitby, and Joe, uh, obviously, coming from Holland, grew up uh, in a sporting family. Most of the Dutch are multi-sports athletes. His brother, Gilles, was a box cross player, while his uncle, Ed, uh, Ed Kia, and cousin, Jeff Bukaboom, also played in the NHL. His best friend growing up was future NHL teammate, Gary Roberts. Now, he played both hockey and lacrosse growing up in Lake, and the latter considered his better sport. At one point, Newendike was considered the top junior lacrosse player in Canada. He earned a spot again with the Whitby Warriors Junior A squad at the age of 15 and was named the MVP of the Minto Cup Tournament in 84 when he led the Warriors to the national title. Now, the Ontario Lacrosse Association later named its Junior A Rookie of the Year Award after Newendike. Now, Newendike for some reason went undrafted by any OHL league team, so he played a season of Junior B for the Pickering Panthers in 84. Now eligible for the 84 NHL Drentry Draft, he remained unselected, but chose to attend Cornell, where he played hockey and lacrosse for the Big Red. He was named the ECAC Hockey Rookie of the Year in 85, with 29 points in 23 games. At the 85 initial entry draft, the Flames selected him in the second round, 27 overall, with a pick obtained that day in the trade with the North Stars for Kent Nielsen. The disappointment in Calgary over the trade of Nielsen resulted in some criticism of Newendike's selection, famously leading to a local newspaper to question the moves with a headline, a kind of a parody in a Joe Clark headline, a former Prime Minister, Joe Who. Well, 
This woke him up, I think. Now, return to Cornell for 86. He chose to give up lacrosse in order to focus on hockey. He was named an ACAC First Team All-Star in 86 and an NCAA All-American after scoring 42 points in 21 games. In his final season at Cornell, he was named the team's MVP and led the ECAC in scoring with 52 points. He was again named an ECAC All-Star and NCAA All-American and the finals for the 87 Obie Baker. Now, New Dyke eventually chose to forego his senior year in favor of turning professional. In 80 game one games with Cornell, New Dyke scored 73 goals and 151 points, both among the highest totals in the school's history. His number 25 jersey was retired by Cornell in 2010, shared with Ken Dryden's number one as the first such numbers retired by the squad, and believed the first in any sport in the school's varsity sports history. Now, in 2011, he was named one of the 50 greatest players in ECAC uh, history. Now, with the big red, uh, what do you really stood out for him? Not like I said, uh, the largest big man in hockey, but a power forward, a good hitter, uh, had the aspects of Cam Neely, a little bit of Mark Messier, a little bit of Richards, a little bit of Bellevaux, a very smart player, and wasn't going to take a dumb penalty. If you couldn't stop him, he was going to stop you. Sort of like Gronkowski and... Uh, like before there was a Gronkowski, there was a Joel Nudyk. Now, once his junior career at Cornell ended, uh, uh, Nudyk joined in the Canadian national team for five games before turning pro with the Flames. He made his initial debut on March 10, 87, against the Capitals and scored his first goal against Golden Thunder Pete Peters. He appeared in nine regular season games in the 87 season, scoring five goals and one assist, and appeared in six playoff contests. Now, playing his first full season in 88, he captured the attention of the sports media by scoring 32 goals in his first 42 games to put him on a pace to surpass Mike Bossy's rookie record of 53. Now, Newendike finished two goals short of Bossy's record, but led the team with 51 goals and was the second first-year player to score at least 50 goals in one season. Now, pause for a second, just a moment. So because of the popularity in TSN and the various hockey medias across Canada, he quickly uh, became a media darling. Now, Newendike eventually finished two goals short of Bossy's record, but led the Flames with 51 goals, and again was the second first-year player to get at least 50 in one campaign. He also played the All-Star game and was named to the All-Rookie squad and was voted the winner of the Calder. Now, he also scored 51 goals in 89 and uh, scored his 100s career in his only 144th career game. Now, unstoppable is not a word. He was on pace that year to do something, and this is what happened. At the time, he was the third fastest player to reach the milestone behind Bossy and Mercer Richard, and was the third player in league history to score 50 goals in each of his two seasons behind Bossy and Wayne Gretzky. He led the league with 11 game-winning goals and set a franchise record for the Flames on January 11, 89, when he scored five goals in one contest against the Jets. Now, appear, he also appeared in the second of three consecutive All-Star games. Now, in the 89 playoffs, he scored 10 goals and four assists to help the Flames win their first and only Stanley Cup title in franchise history. In the clinching game against the Habs, Newendike set up Lanny McDonald's final initial goal with a quick pass after receiving the puck from Hack and Lube, and Gilmore uh, put the Habs out of their misery later on. But get this, ladies and gentlemen. Montreal had won Game 3 at home with Ryan Walter, lost Game 4, went back to Calgary, and from then, like I said, you could stop Gilmore, but he couldn't stop Newendike. He could stop uh, McDonald, but he couldn't stop Newendike, and he put Newendike and McDonald together, you saw what happened. Now, after winning the title in 89, a 45-goal season in 90 was enough to lead the squad in goal scoring for a third consecutive season. Now, he missed the first 11 games in a 92 campaign after suffering a knee injury during a summer evaluation camp for the 91 uh, Canada Cup Team Canada entry. Now, New Knight began the season as the 12th captain in Flames franchise history. He was limited to 22 goals and 56 points in the season, but scored his 200 on December 3rd, 91 against the Red Wings. His 230 career goal against the Lightning on November 13th established a Flames franchise record 
for career goals, which since has been broken. Now, he entered the 96 season unhappy with his contract status. He felt he was being disrespected by Flames management. Now, un unable to come to terms with the Flames, he had gone to arbitration and was awarded a contract worth only $1.85 billion, but insisted on renegotiating the deal into a long-term contract extension. He refused an offer of a three-year, $6 million deal from the Flames, and as the dispute dragged on, chose not to join the team when the season began. He remained a holdout until December 1995, when the Flames trial traded them to Stars in exchange for future superstar Joel McGilda and Corey Millen. Now, the Stars immediately signed Noondike to a $11.3 million deal over five years. Bob Gainey, the team's GM, hoped that the acquisition of Noondike would help the franchise, which had relocated from Minnesota three years previous, and to establish its place in Dallas. Noondike uh, had 14 goals and 32 points in 52 games with the Stars to finish 96. Now, Noondike had 30 goals in 97, despite missing the first month of the season with a fractured rip. A 39-goal season followed, but he was again sidelined by injury after appearing in only one game of the 98 Stanley Cup playoffs. In the opening game of the Stars' first-round series against the San Jose Sharks, he suffered a torn ACL as a result of a check by somewhat dirty Brian Marchment. The injury required two knee surgeries repaired six months to heal, which caused him to miss the beginning of the 99 season. Now, Noondike had something to prove in, in 99, and that's what he did. He finished a regular season with 55 points, including 28 goals in 67 games, and had 11 goals and 10 assists in the playoffs to help the Stars win the first Stanley Cup in franchise history via an overtime goal by Brett Hull against Buffalo. Now, six of his playoff goals were game winners, and it was the Conn Smythe Trophy winner as MVP. However, in, 19, in, in 2000, Newdike again was, had massive injuries. He missed 10 games due to a bruised chest, then suffered a separated shoulder a week after the term that kept him out of lineup for several weeks. That season, he played only 47 games, but added 23 more in the playoffs as the Stars reached the finals. They lost a six game, series in six games to New Jersey. Uh, some people say not 100% Newdike played a big factor in New Jersey getting past Dallas. Now, he played his 1,000 NHL game on January 20, 2002 against the Blackhawks. However, two months later before the playoffs, he was traded to the Devils along with Jamie Lagenbruder in exchange for Jason Ardott, Randy McKay, and a first-round selection in a 2002 NHL entry draft. Now, New Jersey had the one Stanley Cup in 2000 and reached the finals the following year, acquiring Newendike for the playoff round in 2002. He scored 11 points in 14 regular season games for the Devils, but, uh, but New Jersey was eventually eliminated in the first round of the playoffs by Carolina. Now, Newendike reached two offensive milestones in 2003, scoring his 500 career goal against Kevin Weeks from Carolina, and on February 23rd, he had his 1,000 point in a win over Pittsburgh. He and the Devils reached the Stanley Cup Finals, but Newendike suffered a hip injury in the sixth game of the Eastern Conference Final that prevented him from appearing in the Stanley Cup Final. The Devils, however, defeated the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim in the final, capturing the franchise's third Stanley Cup. Again, for Newendike, it was his third title with his third different team. Now, the Maple Leafs eventually signed Newendike to a one-year contract for 2004. He scored 22 goals for Toronto in a season marred by abdominal and back injuries that limited him to 65 games played and a groin injury that forced him out of the lineup for much of Toronto's second round series loss to the Flyers. He eventually signed on a one-year deal for 2005, but the season was cancelled due to a labor dispute that was feared that would mark the end of Noondike's career. However, when NHL play resumed in 06, the Panthers saw to bolster their lineup with veteran players. He signed both Noondike and Gary Roberts, who had played together in Calgary and Toronto, and who wanted to finish their careers together. They signed two-year, $4.5 million contracts. Noondike eventually appeared in 65 games during the season, with 26 goals and 56 points. He appeared in 15 games in 2007, before a chronic back pain forced him onto injured reserve. After missing 14 games, he announced his retirement on December 7, 2006. Now, as a member of the Canadian National Junior Team at the Worlds, uh, he first excelled with Team Canada by scoring five counters in seven games to help uh, our nation squad win a silver. His 12 million points in the tournament tied him for third in scoring for Team Canada and fourth overall in the tournament. 
One year later, Neuendorf joined the senior national team for the Canada Calgary Cup, a four-team exhibition tournament that served as a preview for the 88 Winter Olympics. He scored a goal in each of the first two games, losses to U.S. and Czechoslovakia for the Canadian team that won the bronze. He joined the senior team again for the 1990 Men's Worlds, but appeared only one game after suffering a knee injury. He was invited to Team Canada Summer Camp for the Canada Cup in 91, but again suffered a knee injury that caused him to miss the entire tournament. Now, NHL players were first allowed to participate in the Olympic Ice Hockey Tournament in 98. Neuendijk was among the players named to join Canada's then dream team. He scored two goals and three assists in six games. But it was one of several Canadian players stopped by Czech goalie Dominic Hoshek in a shootout overtime loss uh, in the uh, semifinals. Canada then dropped a treaty decision to Finland to finish fourth. Now, Neuendijk uh, played on a line with Brendan Shannon and Tiro Fleury on Canada's checking line at the Olympic tournament, scoring one goal and again uh, uh, helping Canada win his first Olympic hockey gold medal in 50 years. That's got to be the best defensive forward line that the NHL uh, has ever put together. Brendan Shannon and Tiro Fleury and Neuendijk shutting down the best players on the other team. Definitely outstanding. Now, Talking about his playing style, uh, Cliff Fletcher said he was a pre- preeminent two-way guy who had 50 goal seasons. He had a great stick around the net, he had a great shot, saw the ice well, he could skate, he had size, he had everything he needed to have. History has indicated that wherever he went, the team was competitive. The more that was on the, on the line of big games, the better he played. He was offensive center in Calgary and a power play specialist, able to withstand the physical punishment required to stand in front of the net to battle for the puck. He led the NHL in power play goals in 88 with 31 and finished in the top 10 of 400 occasions. Gretzky, who also played box across in his youth, argued that the skills Neuendijk learned dodging opposing players in that sport aided his development as a hockey player. Neuendijk was regarded as a top face-off man as well, a skill that Team Canada relied on during the Olympics. Again, a check and line center in 2002 because of his defensive and face-off abilities. Now, Neuendijk was considered a pure leader, captain of the Flames for four seasons, and his teammates in Dallas praised him as a player who would help guide the younger players as they began their careers. His presence was considered an important factor in New Jersey 2003 title, as Lou Lamarillo, the GM of New Jersey, praised his impact more down and off the ice, and uh, he had intangibles, which are really more tangible than anything, are what he brought to the locker room uh, from leadership and unselfishness. It was obvious that when he didn't play, he was still so active in his support. He's genuine in every sense of the word. He was a true team player. Again, inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 2011, and his uniform number was honored by the Calgary Fames on March 7, 2014, and he was named to an organization's Fever Flame program, again, he saw that number 25 was retired. Now on the management side, again, he uh, turned to the Florida Panthers front office as a consultant to GM Jacques Pantin in 2007. He left the Panthers after one year to join the Leafs as a special assistant to GM Cliff Fletcher and then served as an assistant GM for the silver medal winning Canadian national team in the 2009 Worlds and on June 1st, 2009 was named GM of the Stars. His ability to make moves was at times limited by the financial difficulty team over Tom Hicks. Among New and Dyke's decisions in his first two years, as GM was to allow popular to former team captain Mike Badaro to leave the organization after 22 years with a franchise in 2010. New Dyke stated such moves were difficult as he played with Madano and considered him a friend. New Dyke was eventually released as a star GM at the conclusion of the 2013 season as team owner Tom Gaglardi stated that the team wanted to take this organization as a different direction. Now again, he was a pro scout with the Hurricanes for a number of years as well as an advisor. Now, New Dyke and his wife Tina have three children. In 95, while a member of the Flames, he also won the Neuendijk, uh, Neuendijk won the King Clancy Award, given annually to the player best that exemplifies leadership qualities on and off the ice, and who made a significant humanitarian contribution to his community. Very busy with his family, but he taught, he taught his children and everyone around him that giving back was important. He was also honored by the league for his contributions to Society for the Provincial Cruelty of the Animals, SPCA, and was a spokesman and honorary chairman of the Foothills Hospital Foundation. He also remained active with the SPCA after his trade to Dallas. And following the September 11, 2001 attacks, organized a charity softball game that raised 115000 for charitable groups in the aftermath of the attack.
While a member of Maple Leafs during the lockout, he participated in a charity hockey game organized by cancer survivor and former Hab and Leaf Keith Acton that raised 30000 for cancer and leukemia charities in southern Ontario. So let's look at the rough stats. Pickering Panthers, 58 points in 38 games at Junior B. Uh, Cor Cornell, just uh, tremendous, uh, tremendous numbers. Lord appointed uh, two points a game pace. Canadian national team for a short while. Again, two goals in five games. Uh, Calgary, again, uh, talking about the goal totals in Calgary. Uh, full seasons, of course, uh, from 88 to 90, uh, 95. 51-51-45, uh, 45-22, 38, 36, and 21. With Dallas, we need 96 and 02, uh, 14, 30, 39, 28, 15, 29, and 23. Uh, he also scored two in New Jersey in the second half of 2002. New Jersey, 17 and 03. Maple Leafs, 22 and 04. Uh, he's returned to Panthers in 06, 26 goals in the final five games. Now, a very gentlemanly player, despite 1,257 game played, or only 677 minutes and penalties. And uh, in the playoffs, this is where it stands out for me, ladies and gentlemen. 158 games, 116 points, 66 goals. One of the best totals in NHL history. And you look at the 89 totals, 14 points in 22 games. The back-to-back -back in 90 and 2000. In 46 games, he had 31 points, including 18 goals. Now, on the international level, again, World Junior Silver in 86, fourth at uh, the Worlds in 90, and the Olympic Games in 98, and Olympic Gold in 2002. Now, awards and honors, ECAC Rookie of the Year in 85, all EAC first team 86 and 87, all AHCA East first team All American 86 87, the ECAC Player of the Year in 87, Calder and NHL Rookie Team in 88, Stanley Cup winners 89, 99, 2003, King Clancy 95. And I think for a lot of people, uh, uh, the 1999 campaign, the, the Connie Smite, that's where he played out. Uh, you know, uh, tremendous, tremendous numbers. Now, I honestly think if he would have brought Neuendijk in for the 86 Cup run, which I think that was a was a slight uh, a slight mistake, but he was he was uh, in a, he was not NHL eligible at the time, of course, because he was still playing with the Big Red. Uh, what we could have done against Montreal, they were trying uh, a lot of stuff, but he was still uh, he was still in college, so he couldn't come in. You have to give at least up, you know, one half year of eligibility. But Joel Noondike was scary, and I don't mean in a bad way. I mean you wanted Joel Noondike on your team, and what Toronto got with the Joel Noondike of uh, 04. Let's put this in perspective. Uh, he scored six goals in the playoffs that year, basically with half a back and half a knee, or had only one leg, pretty much. And he could have easily, with the right line mates, he could have scored 50 goals every year. But the pounding he took in front of the net, ladies and gentlemen, he was doing everything. He was playing defense, he was playing power play, he was logging a lot of minutes. But like I said, 564 goals, he could have easily scored 700. But you look at the games played, I'll give you an example of what I mean. Um, the injuries were getting to him in, in 94, he only played 64 games. Short, uh, strike short to 95, 46. Then 52, 66, 73, 67, 48, uh, 69. Had a full season in 02, back to himself. Then 64 and 04, 65 and 06. So he missed at least 150 to 200 games. He easily could have been 650 or 700 goals, a complete healthy. But Dyke is once in a generation player because he knew where the net was. And it, it's like Gretzky once said, I got the puck, get your own puck. We couldn't do anything against him in 89. It was scary because... You can hold him for the first period, you can hold him in the second period by Montreal by the time of the third period. And like when Ryan Walters scored in overtime in game three, that was nice, but you know, we didn't have the defensive squad like we had in eighty six to hold back Dundike. We couldn't hold back uh, Dana Merzen and like we couldn't hold back Gilmore. I mean, that's that's a team that rivaled Gretzky's orders in their prime. And when Dundike got there late and by the time Gretzky left like, we would like to see a Neuendijk led Flames taken on a Gretzky Oilers in, like, in their prime. Like, the 89 Oilers, excuse me, the 80, 85 Oilers 
taking on the 89 Flames. I'll tell you something, the Edmonton will have a hard goal with that because Newendike was the best of Messier, Anderson, and Gretzky in the same player. He could play defense, but he could score. And don't wake him up. You don't have a little expression. Anyway, so that's the legend of Joe Newendike. If you like what we're doing here with our Vintage Gen Show podcast, give us a like, comment, or subscribe. Electro Night in Canada, just like Hockey Night in Canada, keep your stick on the ice. And to everybody that's listening on the channel, we're near 400,000 hits. Thank you so much. Bye.